Are we ready tonight? Are we ready tonight? Chapter 9, verse 23. All things are possible to everyone that believes. If you can believe tonight, you will enter the realm where all things become possible. Can we lift our hands to Jesus and just give him praise this morning? Father, we bless your name. Father, we exalt you. We give you all the glory. I want you to genuinely open your mouth right now and thank him for what he has been doing since day one of Come Meeting 2022. Father, we thank you. You are not grateful, are you? Go ahead and thank him. Say, Father, thank you. Father, thank you. Father, we give you praise. Father, we bless your holy name. Father, we honor your name. Thanks be to God. Thanks be to God who always causes us to triumph. Glory, 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 hallelujah. Let your voice be high to the heavens. If you thank him, he will do more. 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 I say lift your voice and thank him. Lift your voice and thank him. When you thank him, he will do more. He will release more. He will release more. Do you want more? Then go ahead and thank him. Go ahead and thank him. Father, we give you praise and glory. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we praise. Father, we bless you for this morning. We exalt your name. Thank you for what you have been doing. And thank you for bringing us together. Father, we ask that again this morning we will pour upon us your rain in the name of Jesus Christ. Let it rain mightily upon us this morning and our lives will never be the same in the name of Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. I can hear your amen. No, no, no. I can hear your amen. Raise your voice and shout hallelujah. Glory to God. Whilst he's standing on our feet, can we celebrate again? We can't do it enough. Our father, our daddy. Come on, come on. Go ahead and do it. Our reverend. Hallelujah. And our mommy is here. Can we celebrate mommy? Mommy, we love you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. All our CC pastors who are laboring day and night, can we give God praise on their lives? <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Amen. Greet somebody and say good morning. Welcome to church. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Please, you may be seated. God bless you. Hallelujah. We honor all the other pastors, associate pastors from all the branches. Uh, we honor you. Amen. Hallelujah. And um, this morning we are blessed. You know, God always blesses every assembly with elders to provide balance and direction. Can we celebrate our elders that God has blessed us with? <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Do you believe you'll be blessed this morning? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay. Um, um, in the next few minutes, I'm, I'll be sharing something very serious with us. Um, it's a dreadful topic. Breaking territories through prophetic prayers. Breaking territories through prophetic prayers. Breaking territories through prophetic prayers. Mm. Mm. Breaking territories to prophetic prayers. Um, this is a teaching, but prophetic teachings are not regular teachings. Meaning that um, when prophetic teachings are taught, certain things can happen, and don't be surprised. I just want you to be sensitive and be open. If you notice one thing about this camp meeting, there's been an atmosphere of liberality. Is that correct? There's liber you, are li you are free under the Holy Ghost to express yourself. 
You are not bound by laws. So you are free. As the Spirit of God stirs up your heart, just go ahead. You feel like praying in the course of the meeting. We won't shut you down. Go ahead and pray. Amen. You want to scream? You want to... Any expression that comes, go ahead. Breaking territories to prophetic prayers. Hmm. Let's look at our dominion mandate. Genesis chapter 1 from verse 26. Twenty-seven. Amen. Are you looking at the screen? I'm not reading them, but I want you to see them. Twenty-eight. And God, this is one I want to read. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful. Somebody shout, Be fruitful. No, you're not shouting, you're whispering. Say be fruitful. Be fruitful. Say multiply. multiply. Say replenish the earth. Yes, yes. Say subdue it. subdue it. And have dominion. Yes. Let's take it again. Say be fruitful. Be fruitful. Say multiply. multiply. Replenish the earth. Yes, yes. And subdue it. Subdue. And have dominion. Yes. Loud out. Last time. Say be fruitful. Be fruitful. Say multiply. So replenish the earth. Shout this one. So subdue it. And then have dominion. I mean, at the creation of man, this was the definition of who a man is. This is the fivefold description of a man. The job description of a man. And when I mean man, I speak of the male and the female gender. The fivefold description of the man is what we just shouted out some minutes ago. Be fruitful. Multiply. <laughs> you know, Pastor Tim yesterday was talking to us about numbers. Numbers matter. Somebody say multiply. Multiply and replenish the earth. Another version says, fill the earth. I was designed to fill the earth. You see, it is a, it's a consciousness is a mentality the mentality that says I'm good in my corner I'm fine in my small space you know word without end amen it's not of God I was made my structure my makeup is to fill the earth I am designed to fill the earth the entity called man is designed to fill the earth What is earth? When we speak about the earth, the, the, the translation earth here, ethos, cosmos, does not speak only of geographical space. There are three things that you must be concerned about. Are we together? Three things. Number one, you must be concerned about space. Somebody say space. Oh, I can't hear you. Somebody say space. When he say filled the earth, it's talking about filled the space of the earth. Feel the span of the earth. That's why God is, is passionate about taking land. Go and take that land. Go and take that space. Go and occupy that space. Where Pastor Emeka read to us earlier this morning, I mean, we didn't even have a conversation. He said, God told Abraham, arise, go to where? A land. Somebody say a land. I will show you. Occupy space. Part of the things you're supposed to feel and occupy when it has to do with earth is the space. Either you like it or not, the more space you have, the more control you have. If you are staying in a one-bedroom flat and three-bedroom flat, physically it's not the same. Spiritually, it's not also the same. <laughs> Space matters. Space. Think. Space.
Think about it. Think about geographical span, location. It's not humility to stay in a small space. It is ignorance. It's not humility. You don't understand your mandate as a man. God said do what? Feel. Somebody say feel. Space. Number two. People. You must be concerned about space. You must be concerned about who has the people. The design is this. You are following somebody and somebody is following you. Amen. Oh. How many people do you have following you? The Bible would mention the number of the armies. Is that correct? And Abraham had what? Trained 300 servants. Trained. The Bible mentioned the number. Feel. When God says feel, it includes the space. It includes what? People. You must be concerned about who is in control of the space and who is in control of what? The people. When you are in a place when you, you think about the space, how many space do I have to myself? And how many people do I have to myself? Number three, you must be concerned about influence. Who's got the influence? When the Bible says, fill the earth, it does not just speak of the geographical space. It does not just speak of the people. It is also talking about the spiritual climate, the culture, the civilization, the way of life. Who is in charge? And who's got the control? In your office, you must be concerned, not just about the space, not just about the people. Who's got the control? Who is in charge? Amen. Part of the empowerment we are receiving from this committee is to use our faith to take charge of territories. Remember what the man of God said yesterday. It's not just a receiving faith. It's also a performing faith. It's not just a receiving faith. It is a what? A performing faith. Not just faith to receive but faith to perform. Faith to perform. Feel the earth. Somebody say, it's my mandate. Oh, you are not saying it well. Say, it's my mandate. Call your name. Say, Ernest, call your name. I am designed to feel the earth. That means when you have an entity that is called a man, that is not thinking like this, as, God, as far as God is concerned, you are not thinking like a man. You are thinking like the beast of the field. Because the definition of man is coded in these five assignments. That means when you are walking and you are not thinking about space, you are not thinking about lands, you are not thinking about people, you are not thinking about influence, you are not a man. You are something else. So when we discuss territories, it's not for pastors. It's not for bishops. It's for a man. Somebody says it's for a man. Yeah. It's for a man. Please let that sink and let that change your mindset. Let that change your mindset. Psalms 24.1 Earth is whose is the Lord's and what? And then the scripture now says that the heavens of the heavens is of the Lord, and the earth has it done what? Has he given to who? That means that listen, power is acquired in two ways. Power and control is acquired in two ways. Number one, by sacrifice, number two. By authority. 
power can be gotten by sacrifice. I can, through my sacrifice, acquire some level of power. But I can also acquire power if it is bequeathed to me. Power can be bequeathed. Power can be delegated. A delegated power is equal to authority. A. The owner of the earth is the Lord. But the Lord decided as the real owner to give man the sea of O. Are you with me? The earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. But when you quote that scripture, remember the adjoining scripture that says that the heavens of the heaven, but the, the earth has a what? Given. Somebody say given. Not will give. Given. Is it present tense or past tense? I'm asking you a question. Is it in the past or present? Has he given to the sons of men? Given. That means the management of the earth has been bequeathed by God. Somebody say, I'm a manager of the earth. <laughs> You're not saying it, you say, I'm a manager of the earth. Say it again, say, I'm a manager of the earth. Say it again, say, I'm a manager of the earth. You see, we don't talk about these things often in churches. That's why we have believers who behave like chickens. They don't understand that they are managers of the earth. So we quote scriptures with excitement. The sun shall not smite me by day. It was not, in the beginning it was not so. The sun is one of the entities on the earth and it, it cannot smite you because the sun is under your authority. Are you with me now? Why we can quote that scripture was because man fell. A fallen man can quote that scripture. The sun shall not smite me. But a man who is in Christ Jesus should not quote that scripture. The sun can smite you. A certain man, Joshua, was fighting a war and it was not done. He told the sun, wait until I'm done. What he did, but and the son waited at the, at the valley of Ajalon until he finished. So while the man is commanding the son, another man is praying, son, don't smite me. I'm a manager of the earth. We, we need to change our messages and be careful what we say. It sounds nice, but it is rubbish. A fallen man who does not know Jesus can speak like that because the authority was taken at the Garden of Eden and Satan stole it. But the Bible says Jesus came and he died and he took back what Satan and gave it to us. While he was ascending, he said, all power in heaven on earth has been given to me. He said, now go ye. Somebody say, go ye. In that expression, go ye, is delegated power. All the power you need was in that word, go ye. I told you that power can be gotten by sacrifice and by delegation. So Jesus was the one who fought. He went, came out of hell bloody from the warfare. And he got the, he, you were not there. Did you go to hell for him? He went to hell. You were not there. As Jonah was in the belly of the fish, the son of man was in the, in the, in the deepest part of the earth. The Bible says he that descended is also the one that ascended. And he led captivity captive and he gave gifts to men. So he fought the war. And while he came out of the grave, bloody from the war, he, while he was still being crowned in heaven, lift up your head, O ye gates, Psalm 24. As he sat down, the coronation was still on. When he told them, give me a minute, the Bible said he left heaven and appeared again to the guys who betrayed him, who went out fishing. Somebody say love. When you have all the power, you have the right to do whatever you like with it. Jesus decided that even though I have all the power in heaven on earth, it's not for me. I will be quit it. And he said, go ye. Hallelujah. The earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. The world and those that are in it. In it. 
when you are sent and when you are speaking on behalf of the one who sent you, the authority that you have is in the authority that the person gives to you. So while you are managing the earth, when you are challenged, you can quote the scripture and say, the earth is who? is the Lord. That means the original actual owner of the earth, the people, the influence, and the spiritual climate within is the Lord. That means everything within earth should reflect the glory of God. Everything in the earth, in the territory, should reflect the glory of the king. The responsibility of sons is to do the pleasure of the father. As a son, your initial and first responsibility is the heartbeat of the father. And the pleasure of the father is that his will, which is his predominant thought, will be done on earth. That means that when you are walking on the earth, your obsession must be, is the will of God done here? Amen. Is the will of God done here? Listen to this. Part of the redemption plan is the recovery of the earth, the occupation of the earth, and the submission of the earth to the Father. Please write that down. Part of the redemption plan is the recovery, somebody say recovery, of the earth, the occupation of the earth, and the submission of the earth. I say to you now that even though the earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof, the will of God is not done on the earth fully. If it was done, Jesus would not pray the prayer he prayed. He says, pray in this manner, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy what? Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That means the issue of the will of God upon the earth is still a prayer point. still a prayer point what is happening through redemption is recovery the word redemption means to buy back amen to buy back let me tell you in the hierarchy of things God is first and then man and then after man is the earth if anything above you, above you falls, you also fall. The fall of man led to the fall of creation. The fall of man led to the fall of the earth. So if the earth will be redeemed, man has to be redeemed. So that man can do what? Can redeem the earth. So part of the things that man is called to do is redemption of the earth you were called to redeem the earth immediately you are redeemed you start redeeming the earth the space the people have influenced the spiritual climate you start redeeming the earth when you preach the gospel you are redeeming the earth when we dedicate a space and we say this place belongs to God, we are redeeming the earth. The more space we occupy, the more the will of God is done. Is somebody listening to me? For example, this is a space. This is a place. This is a piece of land. On a certain day, this place was dedicated to Jesus. Yes or no? Do you know that as far as this space is concerned, Satan has nothing to do with this space? 
excuse me, what if this land was larger? What if there are also 50 other churches dedicated? What if there are 50 other homes dedicated? What if there are 50 other places dedicated? 50 other hospitals, offices dedicated to Jesus? What do you think is happening? The will of God is advancing upon the earth. Think space. When you build a business and you occupy a space and you call a minister and say, give it to Jesus, automatically Satan is checked out. He has lost his space. He will have to shift his back. The more we build, the more he's moving. The more we are pushing him out. We will push him out of the earth. That's why you must think big. That's why we must think big. We must think big. We must be wide in our thoughts. And thank God we are learning about faith for limitless possibilities. Limitless. So you have a hall and you have 100 members and the place is tight and you're about to get another hall. You won't get a hall that will just be times two. You will get a hall that is times five. And you say, don't worry, I will fill it. We will fill it. So we recover the land. I'm coming to prophetic prayers, and that's where we'll wrap up. We recover the land through deliverance. We recover earth through deliverance prayers, through prophetic intercession. Romans 8 told us that the <laughs> that the creation grown it in expectation until now waiting for what the manifestation the bible explained to us that the creation is subjected in hope that means that the creation is under the bible says under bondage amen there are spaces that are under bondage There are properties that if you move in, those who have lived in it, once you enter that place, everything starts going down. Children start dying. You have five cars, it reduces to one. Am I correct? Are there no properties like that? Things start going down. The Bible says that that property, that land, was not designed to do that. It is abnormality. That land should cause wahala for people. That land is under bondage. When you come to that space as a believer, they now say by mistake, you can take the house. You stay there for one year, two years. One of your responsibilities is recovery. Somebody say recovery to set the property free and after you have lived and you have come out somebody packs in and prosperity you have returned the land to its actual factory setting I was designed to return things to their factory setting you must understand that Think about it. Think territories. Think possession. Recovery. Number two, when we have recovered through prayers, then we occupy through dominion. We occupy through dominion. And number three, we will submit it. A time will come when all things will be submitted to God and to Jesus Christ. Yes, we'll submit it. Number one, recovery. Number two, we would keep it. We will occupy it through dominion. 
And number three, we will submit it. Let's move a little further. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8. Joshua chapter 1 from verse 1 to 8. Very quickly. Now, after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun. Moses saying, next verse, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over what? This Jordan. Thou and all these people unto the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Somebody says, peace. I can't hear you. Say space. Yes. So God was saying that you have been here. Stand up and get over the land and take it. I want you to know that over your life, there's a declaration to arise and take more space. Over your life, there's a declaration over you to arise and take more territories. Anywhere God has called you, God has called you to arise and take more. The Jordan at that time was not the Lord's. And I will show you. Kabarate. When they were done with Jordan, Jordan became a potter. You know what a potter is? A transmission for he for, to heaven. By the time they took over Jordan, Jordan turned into something else. A normal piece of land, a normal place under the government of God became God's transmission point. Amen. So that if you came around Jordan, you will see God. It was a Jordan. Jo Elijah had to journey to Jordan to go up into the heavens. Jesus had to be baptized at the river Jordan. Jordan became a gate. A place that was formerly the occup occupation of Satan and devils. That's your destiny. You were designed to redeem the earth. To recover grounds that belong to God. That are now occupied by Satan. Listen to this. There is no unoccupied territory. Write it down. No unoccupied territory. All territories are occupied. If it is lost, it is taken over. If it is lost, it is taken over. If it is lost, it is taken over. You don't grow a church after a while, the church will close down. And what will happen? A bar will move in. You have lost a territory. Are you with me now? You don't expand your church, you lose your ground. A mosque will move in. What have you done? You have lost a territory. No unoccupied territory. If you slack, it will be taken over. I will show you scriptures to prove to you that all territories are measured and there are boundaries in the earth. Uh, come on now. Are you with me? One of the reasons why we have acquired the spirit of faith is so that we can break, we can take grace to pursue and overtake. Everything that was lost, God's hope for recovery is his sons. Did you hear what I said now? God's hope for recovery is who? It's his sons. So over my life is a recovery and redemptive mandate. Jesus, my redeemer, has redeemed me so that I too will be a redeemer. So I'm also a redeemer. Come on, I'm also a savior. Somebody shout, I'm a savior. Loud, I'm a savior. Your assignment is in your name. And you are named by the name of Jesus. Once you are born again, the name of Jesus is upon you. And the name Yeshua is the meaning, is the word savior. Do you know what Joshua actually means? Joshua, savior. Joseph, savior. He sent a man before them by the name Joseph. He sent a man before them by the name Joseph. Upon you is the name Jesus. In your DNA is the ability to save. He says, savior shall arise from Mount Zion. They will judge the Mount of Esau.
That means there's the Mount of Zion and there is the what? The Mount of Esau. Territories. That means the Mount of Esau, if Josh can become Zion. Oh no, you didn't hear me. Our God is not just our Father. He's also our King. Let me tell you how kings think. think kings think about more lands. Hmm. Think, kings think about space and more territories. When you are dealing with God as a king, it's not enough to sit at home and you know, you're just eating, drinking tea. No. A king is concerned about more space, more land, more power. Let me tell you, kings think that way because that's how kings are made. Our God is not just our father, he's also a king. He's the emperor of the earth. He will not stop until all of the earth look like him. He will not stop until all the influence in the earth reflect his glory. And so when, as Pastor Tim was saying yesterday, when you are a servant of the Lord, when you are a son, the responsibility of sons is to please the father. And the number one pleasure of the father is that his will will be done where? In the earth. Simple. If you call yourself a son, you must be obsessed with his will. And obsession with his will means that your thoughts will be territorial. When you get anywhere, you are thinking space, people, influence. Space, people, influence. You don't just come to your office and sit down. You are obsessed with something apart from your job. You are concerned. Who is in charge? Amen. Everywhere. Somebody say everywhere. There are some supermarkets. You went to buy things just to buy soap. You went and then some Indians, you see how it does everywhere. You tell me that Jesus is in control there. He is not in control. He's not in control. Even though the earth is the Lord's and his fullness thereof. As far as that supermarket is concerned, God has lost that territory. And he has faith in you that you will recover it for him. So there's something you can do. And one day, that supermarket can close down. A Yamana, Suzy Vahai, and a church can come up there. Mm -hmm. you have the power eh, to recover for the Lord the real owner of a property is not the person that paid for it uh, the real owner of a property is the person that has control over it so they, they may have paid their rent you can still remove them mm -hmm. you can remove them Amen. You see, the Bible says we should live as pilgrims. Do you know why if you, have, if you have walked with God, you realize that for every place you stay in, there's a purpose. That's why sometimes you can stay in a place, after two years, God says move out, pack out, leave. Most times when you stay in a place, it's because you have not done anything. You've been there for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. You probably have not done nothing much. Or an ongoing work. A work is ongoing. So God can say, move from this area. Take a house here. You take a house. And when you take a house, God says you have two years. You have three years. You have four years. You have five years. You see, I'm saying these things and many of us, we are finding it strange. But that is how it's supposed to be. That's why if you notice the Israelites, they were, they were always mobile. By their movement, they were taking lands. Just by moving. When you see the Israelites coming towards you, forget it. You have lost your land. The Bible says, and they got the land, not by the possession of their hands. When you see them with the ark, they are coming to take your land. God is particular about space. People were killed just to get space. To collect thresholds, people were killed for it. Amen. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Recovery, which is redemption. Number two, Occupy it. Stay there. Re you stay through dominion. And number three, you will submit it to the Lord. You will submit it because it now belongs to God. Let's wrap up this way. Specifically. Hmm. Let me show you something. Deuteronomy 32 verse 8. I want... CEV and then KJV. You, something very strange. 
CEV first and then KJV. Look, let's look at KJV. Are you, are you there? I can't hear you again. Are you there? <laughs> when the Most High divided the nations, their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the boundaries of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. That means the nation of the earth has been divided. And they were divided across the 12 tribes. Are you with me? CEV, if you can get it. Or NIV or another translation. Somebody say, I have an inheritance. Louder. Say, I have an inheritance. And it is, it is territorial. God has given you lands. God has given you portions and places. Look at what he said. He said to the nations, the nations, the nations, the nations, the nations, the nations. He, he divided them according to the number of the 12 tribes. Another version if you have it. That's why David said in Psalm 16 verse 6, he says, the lines are falling to me. Do you know what lines are? Lines speak of boundaries. Boundaries, places are falling to me where? In pleasant places. We quote the scripture and we don't even know what it means. Because the average Jew was trained to think about inheritance. And the inheritances are places, are lands. There's another, it's unfortunate CEV or, 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 or NIV. The Bible explained to us that these lands were divided according to the numbers in the heavenly courts. I'm telling you. Another version says that they were divided and each of the lands were handed over to a heavenly being. Listen to this. After the division of the lands, I'm closing with this. After the division of the lands, God apportioned each territory to an angel. Listen to this. To a prince. So every territory has over it a prince of God, an angel of the Lord, to partner with the people of God. To partner with the people of God. Now, when the people of God do not partner with God to take that land, the prince or the angel over that boundary is incapacitated. And that territory is now taken over by another prince. So that means that Pasha originally had its angel. Are you with me now? Pasha was lost, and the loss of Pasha landed it in the hand of the prince of Pasha. Daniel had to pray. That's why if you notice, when Daniel prayed, Michael was sent. Michael was not the prince over that, that place, but Michael had to help the prince over the place to displace the prince of Pasha. Are you with me now? So that means that when territories are lost, they are taken over. And when they are taken over by, by, the, by, by Satan, he places a prince or an angel there to keep that territory. Now, these princes are ensure that number one, the space belongs to Satan. Are you with me? The people belong to who? To Satan. And the influence belongs to Satan. One of the jobs of princes over a territory is to ensure that culture, civilization, dressing, language is shaped according to the kingdom of darkness. Are you with me now? So he will release a song. He will release a dance. He will release a language. He will release a street language to ensure that the kingdom of darkness is advanced. Princes are responsible for strategies. Powers executed. Are you, are you with me? 
All of a sudden, you wake up in your territory and you see people dancing in a particular manner. And you as a believer, you join them to dance. You lack sense. You don't understand kingdom. You don't understand that when you see a dance, it's a reflection of a kingdom. When you see a song, it's a reflection of a kingdom. When you see a dressing, it's a reflection of a kingdom. Kingdoms are reflected through civilization. So when we say that kingdom come, meaning that the reflections of the kingdom is in the territory, true dressing. When you see believers, you should know that the kingdom of God is here. Amamo sambreske paluatai zevina jile kembrosi sibata. Part time, a kingdom is occupied. The territory is there's no there's no room for emptiness. You say when the devil is sent out, amen. The the devil will go and will return. To see whether that temple has been what occupied. If it's empty, what will happen? The Bible says it will go and bring what seven more. Seven more. Oh my God, are you getting what I'm saying this morning? He divided. It's unfortunate we can't get that translation. He divided the land according to the number of the heavenly courts. That's one, two. He placed, another version says, he placed an angelic being over each land. That means that when, when the land is divided, God now hands this over. You angel, be the keeper of the territory and ensure that my kingdom here is established. But you will have to partner with men. So angels cannot advance the kingdom. Men do. Amen. This room can be filled with angels everywhere. They will not do anything until man begins to pray. So the prayer is an activation of angelic ministries over a territory. When you begin to pray over a territory, the angels are equipped to walk. And that will bring us to the prophetic prayers. Prophetic prayer is supplication or decrees divinely inspired by the Holy Ghost. Supplications or decreed divinely inspired by the Holy Ghost. Supplications or decrees divinely inspired by the Holy Ghost. Persia stayed under the control of that prince until Daniel began to pray. As he prayed, the prince over the land, the angel for the first time, woke up and began to engage the prince and says, give me back my territory. The prince said, all these years, Pasha is mine. You just wake up because one man is prayed. You want to take it? No way. They began to war. Amen. And let me tell you, whenever there's a warfare going on there, whoever wins is dependent on how much intercession is made. Oh my God. When you begin to pray, you don't know that there's a toss going on in the courts of heaven. There's a drag. And sometimes, who comes out, who wins, it's not whether it's light or darkness. It is how much man has cooperated with the angelic beings over that territory. That's why that quote that God cannot do anything on earth except man prays. It's not God will not. So I say God cannot. I can hear. Say God cannot. God cannot do anything upon the earth except a man prays. That means that whenever you see the hand of God, somebody has prayed. Even if it's not you, don't think that, oh, I didn't pray, oh, somebody prayed. Jacob came to a place and saw a ladder. Somebody prayed. Somebody prayed. The tussle was going on and Daniel continued. May you receive grace to continue. Because if Daniel has stopped, that territory forever remains under the control of the prince of Persia. The Bible said Daniel continued in prayer. As he continued and continued, then there was mobilization. The prayer was so intense. They had to summon the chief warrior, Michael, they said, go and assist the prince over Persia. That territory must be taken. Sufficient prayer has been made for the recovery of that territory. Don't stop as long as in your office people are still taking bribe. That, that, that territory is not yet for Jesus. Don't stop. Don't stop. Keep praying. 
Keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying, keep praying. In your street, there are still five bars. They are drinking five bars in your street. Six brothels in your street. And they still call you pastor. Pastor, good morning. And you are there. You're answering the greeting. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We are recovering space. So, it's simple now. When, before they open, go to the place, the bar, the same bar. Kabarata kata. When you pray, you are handing over the space to God. All of a sudden, somebody comes to drink and conviction falls upon their soul. Nothing happens until a man has prayed. Somebody say, I'm a savior. As we wrap up, think about it. Think about it. In those days, we know, some of us, we pray and say, Lord, please, let them put me in a room where there are, all of them are Christians. In Jesus' name, amen. Some of us didn't pray that prayer. So they, they send you to a room, and then three of them are cultists. Oh, glory to Jesus. Somebody say kingdom. Glory to Jesus. We must prove this Christianity. Is it that it is true or is it a lie? So there is kingdom of darkness and then there is light. And so when you enter that room, the first thing you are thinking is the prevailing atmosphere. That's why if you notice, you know, the darkness, they are very strategic. Have you noticed that sometimes when they play their music, it's never low, it's always high. You, you, will, you will reduce your own volume and say, um, live with peace with all men and holiness, without which no man shall see the Lord. So you reduce your volume and then you pray in a corner. You will pray, you will know when you say, oh, my body, you are praying. Why? Prevailing atmosphere. prevailing that's why high places are important ah, time will not permit me that's why altars are raised it's strategic amen when you say transmit I studied mass communication a transmission mast is not low it's always very high if not you won't broadcast over the people to be able to cast news you have to go up Hayama, Soze. You have to make the map very high so that you can cast news over people. So when Elijah wanted to release the power of God, he says, are you done? He says, the Bible says, he took them to where? Mount Carmel. Come up. Why? Because Mount Carmel had a history of the appearances of God. Oh my God. Moses was moving around, didn't encounter God until he came by Horeb. Where is Horeb? That was the same mountain range where Isaac was almost sacrificed. Some say territories. There are places that you call God, you may not have joined the appearances of God. Why? The place does not belong. That's why it. Abraham will go from place to place and do what and plant altars, 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 altars. So Horeb was a gate. And the Bible said, as Moses made a turn by Horeb, he saw a bush. Oh my God because of the activities of Abraham. Abraham is your father. Abraham took lands. You are supposed to take lands. Listen, and when you take lands, lands record. Land record the activities of men. That's why the angels over territories have books of the activities of men. And they will partner with you in the name of Jesus Christ. We're going to rise up and pray shortly. And as we pray, I want you to pay attention to this. 
when it has to do with territories, breaking territories, number one, you must understand that you have to begin by recovering that territory through prophetic intercession. Intercession. Please write it down. You pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray, you pray. Your school is not, is not under the government of God. You pray. Your office is not under the government of God. You begin to pray. You begin to intercede. You begin to sow seeds of prayer. I recover their hearts. I recover the culture. I recover the predominant atmosphere. I take it. I take it. I hand it over to Jesus. I take this space. As you pray, you will receive number two, a prophetic strategy. The Bible says that as uh, from uh, Joshua chapter 6, as they began to move into Jericho, the Bible says, and Joshua had an encounter. He met a being just at the gate of Jericho. That being was the angel, the prince that God had already originally given to Jericho. So even though Jericho was a Gentile nation, a Gentile land, it belonged to God. But it had been occupied. The angel met with Joshua and stood there with a strategy, with a book, with the instruction on how to take Jericho. So, prophetic intercession will lead to prophetic strategy. Listen, when it has to do with prophetic prayers, it's not an Old Testament practice. The Testament changed, but the God did not change. As you begin to pray for your class, for your school, for your space, for your room, for your office, you will receive a strategy. Amen. In the book of Jericho, you can't take Jericho unless you walk around it. So as he prayed, he received the strategy. Don't go about strategizing without first interceding. Are you with me now? Strategy will come from intercession. For those of us who are fellowship leaders, pastors, there is a strategy for your city. That strategy is in the hand of the prince over that city. The angel over that city is in his book. It is through prophetic intercession that you have access to that book. He will explain to you and says, pray like this, pray like this, pray like this. To take Benin City, God told Archbishop Benson in Dahosa to hold vigils, I think for almost a month. And not just vigils, God told him specific, place, specific places where he must go and pray. Oh my God. Time will not permit me to explain portals and ley lines. I, I can prove to you that the most important place here now in this hall, the most important part of this hall is this place. Why? Spiritual activities. Consistency attracts operation of spirits. So that's why a T-junction is not a normal place. Because they know that the T-junction is a conjunction of lines. Lines, lines, lines. And in a street, the highest point of spiritual energy is in a T-junction. So that's why they put things there. There are portals in the earth. There are places that when you go to, because of the activities of men, you will meet God. There are places you go to, because also the activities of men, you will meet the devil. You, will, you can sleep in some hotel rooms and you will not be able to sleep. You would have demonic encounters. Why? The activities of men. There are also some hotels. You, as you enter, you start seeing angels. The activities of men. How many places are going to be occupied by the devil? Through your activities, we can recover more places. Hallelujah. And he receives the strategy. Walk around seven times. And that's how the territory was taken. As we pray, we will receive strategy. In the name of Jesus Christ. For your office, you will receive strategy. In the name of Jesus Christ. God told Bishop Archbishop Benson, that also go and pray at this time and at this time. 
he noticed that whenever he went to pray at that prayer hour there were also people bringing sacrifices pay attention to prayer watches 12 p.m 3 a.m 3 p.m 6 p.m 9 a.m pay attention to prayer watches pay attention to times and moments of prayer hallelujah hallelujah somebody said there's a strategy for my city there's a strategy for my office there's a strategy for my school i receive it now 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 in the name of jesus can we lift our voice and begin to pray can we rise to our feet 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 A boy is not the same as Lagos. Lagos is not the same as Portacot. Portacot is not, they are not the same. Have you noticed that the boundary of a state is not where they wrote welcome to Lagos? No, 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 no. That's not the boundary. When you cross a state, this, you can sense when you are in another spiritual climate. Amarataka. So sometimes you have not yet said welcome to Delta, but you know that you have left Anambra, you are not in Delta. The spirits are not the same. The atmosphere is not the same. So there are states that are more controlled by the devil. Have you not noticed? There are places you enter, you won't know, but you just want to commit fornication. Somebody say princes. They are put on that territory, the spirit of immorality. There are places you enter, you just begin to, you begin, you hear stealing is prevalent. There are places you enter, it is the women that do well, the men don't do well. Who determines these things? Who controls these things? I, there are places I know when we, where we are in Lagos currently, even though we are living there, there are almost 10 churches. It's in the plaza. Almost 10. More than 10. Almost 15 churches. When we came and we got there and we went around, we noticed that the churches had a specific number. Hallelujah. 10, 2, 3, 4, 5. When we did the research, we realized that certain things were done there. And there was a commandment that if you are a church, this is the limit. If you are a shop, this is the limit. Your profit cannot exceed this amount. So may lift your voice and pray in the spirit. And say, Lord, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus Christ, I take territories. I take the equip me for territories. Equip me, equip me, equip me. Somebody pray. Somebody pray. Equip me. Equip me. Strengthen me. To take back what is yours, Lord. Strengthen me to take back what is yours. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Strengthen me. Are you praying? Are you praying? Strengthen me. Stre By faith, I increase the boundaries of the kingdom. Are we ready tonight? Are we ready tonight? Chapter 9, verse 23. All things are possible to everyone that believes. If you can believe tonight, you will enter the realm where all things become possible.